Thanks for checking out this episode of Angry Video Game Nerd. But first, I want to talk about this episode's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon has created some pretty solid wireless earphones. They look stylish, coming in a wide range of colors and patterns. And they feel comfortable, with no dangling wires or stems getting in the way. And they sound amazing, which really matters to a music lover, like me. Speaking of music, the company was co-created by R&B singer Ray J and worn by people like Snoop Dogg. And if there's anyone in the world you can trust, it's Snoop Dogg. Lastly, they're real affordable, starting at half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they're even cheaper when you click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. It's gonna take you back to the past To play the shitty games that sucked ass He'd rather have Buffalo Taking diarrhea dump in his ear Oh, hey, you're back. Again, you wanna play some more shitty games? You know, I just woke up. I just woke up. Can I just have my healthy, balanced breakfast? What the hell? Check's Quest? A game inside a cereal box? I swear, if a checks man comes out and starts turning all my games into checks, I'm gonna lose it. I just got rid of all that Pepsi left over from that silver son of a bitch. But man, this takes me back. Yeah, remember getting prizes in your cereal? They were usually some piece of shit toy that would break. But for some reason, we all flipped the shit when we'd find these. They were awesome. It was like a little bonus in your breakfast. In 96, General Mills went above and beyond by putting a free video game in every box of checks. And the game was a first-person shooter. Crazy, right? I remember seeing the commercials with that kicking guitar riff and those cool kids eating checks and thinking to myself, oh wow, a free FPS? FPS probably stands for fucking piece of shit. I mean, come on. A free first-person shooter game about checks? I mean, look at Pepsi Man. We all know how that game turned out. And that game cost real money to buy. 2,800 yen in 99, so about 40 bucks in the US nowadays. So you think a free reskin of Ultimate Doom would be good? A family-friendly first-person shooter that uses the source code from an id software game? Reminds me of Super Noah's Ark 3D. Or I'm sorry, Super 3D Noah's Ark. But hey, even if it sucks, at least we get 50 free hours of AOL. That screenshot right there, that is how I first saw the internet. So anyway, let me finish this and then we'll start the game. Mm. <coughs> All right, let's start the game. I really need to go food shopping somewhere besides eBay. If you're playing with the original CD, you get this intro animation explaining the story. It's pretty hilarious. Basically, there's these evil aliens from another dimension called Flemoids. They survive off of cereal and nutritious foods. They've taken over the planet Bazoik, where all the nutritious foods are made, and now they need to be stopped. So now, our hero, Chexman, goes in to send the Flemoids back to their dimension. I'm from Chex Squadron. And I say kill them all! One thing I should bring up, there's no guns, chainsaws, or BFGs. It's a family-friendly first-person shooter, an FFFPS. So what do they use? Zorchers. What are Zorchers? They're, um, things that look like TV remotes. The box says, ready, aim, Zorch. So I guess Zorch means to transport the booger guys back to their own dimension. I just never heard the word Zorch before, and the zapping looks kind of painful. Non-violent enough, I guess. Also, it's kind of weird the main character is named Chexman when there's a bunch of Chex people in this game. Why is he THE Chexman? Maybe it's his last name, like Bill Chexman. 
They did start calling him Chex Warrior later on, kind of like Doom Guy changing the Doom Slayer. The music is pretty good, and the graphics aren't bad for 96. It's pretty much what I'd expect from a rebuild of Doom. The opening screen looks pretty cool, the game moves fast, and looks a lot better than Super Noah's Ark 3D. The difficulty choices really rub me the wrong way. Easy does it, not so sticky, gobs of goo, extreme ooze, and super slimy. Sounds like some of the titles in the video store. You know, the movies for mom and dad section. If you're playing this on a DOS emulator, the mouse sucks. In most first-person shooters, you move with the keyboard and look and shoot with the mouse. In this, the mouse actually moves you around, so playing with mouse and keyboard is a total shit show. It's easier to just use keyboard only. The game itself is, so far, pretty decent. It's Doom with cereal. Find the red, blue, and yellow keys to open doors and find the exit. There's a bunch of different guns or zorchers, and there's even secret rooms to find in each level. I also like the little checks man at the bottom of the screen, like the Doom guy. He makes little faces when he gets items, and when he's close to death, he gets more covered in slime. I gotta say, for a game that's about a checks guy zorching boogers, it's actually a pretty good game. They didn't just rip off Doom, they actually gave it some real attention to detail. For health, you collect glasses of water, bowls of fruit, and veggies, and the almighty supercharged breakfast. It's corny, but it fits the aesthetic of the game. Well, it's not tedious. It's not annoying. It's not ass, and the mascot hasn't come in and changed all my games. So, I think this is a pretty good game. Yeah, I, I hate to say that I, I don't hate this. It's good? <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? Each level's pretty straightforward, but still offers a decent level of challenge. The secrets are pretty well hidden. There's a bunch of good stuff like health and armor power-ups. There's even a super secret Easter egg in the second level. If you get on this elevator and jump to these boxes at the exact moment, you can find a secret door that leads to a room with pictures of the creators and the Laz device. It's basically the BFG from Doom. And like in Doom, there's a ton of different weapons, and each one is the non-violent equivalent. Your default weapons are the Zorcher, which is pretty much the handgun, and the Spoon, which is pretty much the punch. You know, never in my life did I think I'd ever play a game where you're spooning booger aliens. The other guns are the Rapid Zorcher, which is like the minigun, Phasing Zorcher, which is like the plasma rifle, the Zorch Propulsor is like the rocket launcher, and my personal favorite, the most ridiculous weapon, maybe in video game history, the Super Boot Spork. It's an electric spork that tears through everything. It's basically the chainsaw. But come on, it's a spork. Where else can you play a game where you spork enemies to death? Spork them! Yeah! Yeah! Suck spork, you boogery bitch! Yeah, I'm enjoying this game a little bit too much. But don't worry. I'll find something that sucks. One annoying thing is you lose all your weapons when you die. I know this was also in Doom, but it really sucks in this game. I made it all the way to the final level and died. And when I came back, I only had my regular Zorcher and Spoon. Don't you hate it when you only have your Zorcher and Spoon? The final level is damn near impossible with these weapons. There's tons of armored enemies, and if you weren't actively saving, like me, you might as well just reset the whole game. Now, I know that's mostly on me, but things are a bit unfair. Right here, I'm on this tiny ledge, and I'm getting hit by enemies that are way below me. I can't even aim to shoot them, but they can just target me from completely off the screen. Also, in some places, the game gets really dark. I was trying to find my way out of this area, and just kept running in circles before I realized I had been passing the door the entire time. It was just way too dark to see. In level 4, there's this maze. Fuck this maze. It's very easy to get lost. The way out is extremely hidden, which I guess is what they wanted, but god damn, I was in this maze for what felt like forever. Also, if you try to pull up the map, the whole area is blank. Yeah, they knew. They wanted to fuck with people. The maze is the most sadistic thing in this game. And you know there were kids flipping their shits back in 96. It was called the Shit Flippers of 96. You ever hear about it? Yeah. The last thing, the keyboard controls feel kind of sluggish. Turning and shooting is a pain. There are a couple ways you can go about playing this game, so here's the second way. 
For this method, you have to download a Doom source port. There's tons out there, but the one I find to be the easiest is GZ Doom. Using GZ Doom allows you to play the game in the best possible way. You can bump all the settings to max and go from the original DOS graphics to playing in 4K Ultra HD. This also gives you proper mouse control, making me Zorch Incarnate. Motherfuck. Using the GZ Doom source port's definitely the way to go. Yeah, only 30 minutes later, I'm back at the end of the game. The final boss is the Wall of Slime. There's tons of enemies, but you just Zorch them all and save the trapped serial people. And that's Chuck's quest. So how come that didn't totally suck? It was pretty good, and considering the fact that it wasn't made by a major game studio, it was just a small group of people tasked with the impossible to make a game, a free game, based on a serial. Bravo. The company, Digital Cafe, only had a budget of 500000 and a group of eight people. One of them, a programmer named Scott Holman, was only 17 years old at the time. He'd actually work on the game after school. But the real crazy thing is that even to this day, this game has a die-hard cult following. Who would have thought? A game based on cereal? I mean, it's basically just Doom with a new coat of paint. All the characters and weapons behave the same as they would in Doom, but the graphics are colorful and memorable. Even though it's really just a reskin, it still feels like its own thing, if that makes sense. Regardless, this game moved 6 million units and quadrupled the sales of Czech cereal. Considering most people just buy Czechs to make party mix and those muddy buddy desserts, that's a lot of extra profit. There's even two Chex Quest sequels! Chex Quest 2 was a free game available on ChexQuest.com when the first one came out. And Chex Quest 3 was made in 2008! The demand for a sequel was there, even in the days of Xbox 360 and PS3. Each game adds new levels and even new enemies and bosses. And they're all pretty fun. Well, I might say the first is still the best. The second one takes place in Chextropolis. The evil Flemoids have somehow gone back to the home planet of Chexman, and now he has to stop them. It's kind of like Doom 2, Hell on Earth. I love this part where you go in a movie theater and all the Flemoids are watching some weird cartoon loop. There's even posters of serial-related movie parodies. Seems the game developers enjoyed working on this and adding their own flavor to a game about a cereal with no flavor. The game doesn't beat you over the head with constant advertisement. It's a game first and a commercial second. There are ads here and there, but take Pepsi Man, for example, where there were entire levels comprised of Pepsi logos. Then look at Chex Quest. Sure, there's some billboards, but that's about it. The main collectibles aren't just boxes of checks, and the objective is to save your people from evil aliens. It's like, you know, a game. The third game has you fighting against the Flemoids again as they prepare an end-all invasion. The levels are also much bigger in this one. Like I said, it was released 10 years after the first game. The game starts you at Czech Central Command and has you take a ship back to Earth or General Mills Planet or whatever and eventually taking the fight to the Flemoid Mothership. It was made in response to the demand for a new sequel. The fact that people were still going nuts about a free serial-based first-person shooter 10 years after its release really speaks to its merit. These people took an idea that should have flopped and made it into a total win. Yeah, so I'm sorry I didn't have more negative to say. I was really trying here. Um, I know I haven't filled my curse quota for this episode, so fuck, 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 fuck. There we go. I've single-handedly saved the planet and returned the Flemoids back to their home dimension. All is well in Serial Dimension. I am the Supreme Chex Quest Champion. It's overall pretty good. And if you're not convinced, if a family-friendly first-person shooter isn't really your thing, if you need some carnage and mayhem, if you don't want to send the Flemoids back to their dimension, you want to send them to fucking hell? Well, I got the game for you. Motherfucking brutal Chex Quest! That's right, with GZ Doom, you get access to a bunch of awesome mods, one of them being the Brutal Doom mod, which also works on Chex Quest. Play through the entirety of all three Chex Quest games, but get rid of those pussy Zorchers. Lay waste to the Flemoids. Make sure they can never come back to Serial Dimension because they're fucking dead. Fuck! 
This basically takes all the family friendliness out of the game and makes Chex Man the fucking Chex Hitman! Chex the Hitman hard! So after you get your fill of the original Chex Quest, pop in brutal Chex Quest and murder the shit out of some Flemoids! I don't know what a Flemoid is, but I fucking killed their ass! And when you play a game as brutal as brutal Chex Quest, what you need is a brutal cereal to go with it! <laughs> It's checks on steroids. Illegal steroids made from broken glass, rusty fucking nails, and whole grain rice. This cereal will start your day if it doesn't end your life. Fortified with calcium from the bones of fallen angel wings. The only cereal eaten by both God and Satan. It's a straight kick to your muddy buddies. And brutal checks turns your milk red from your own blood pouring out of your fucking screaming mouth! 53 hours of America Online included.